You have to know the past to understand the present. The great scientist Carl Sagan said those words and it applies to motor oil, which is why we're here in Pennsylvania, the birthplace of motor oil. Okay, Valvoline was invented in New York, but I'm technically standing in New York because that's Pennsylvania behind me, and that is where the first oil well was drilled. Hi, I'm Lake, the motor oil geek, and we're standing on hollowed ground. As far as motor oil goes, this is the Drake well. August 27th, 1859. The Drake Well, right here in Titusville, Pennsylvania, was the world's first commercial oil well. It's only 69 and a half feet deep, but it hit crude, the Pennsylvania grade crude, which became the basis of all of modern motor oils. Oil fun fact number one. There's gonna be several fun facts in this video, so just know that. Do you know that a barrel of crude isn't 55 gallons, it's 42 gallons? Why? Because when they hit this well, they didn't have anything else to put it in other than whiskey and beer barrels, which happened to be 42 gallons. Synthetic or conventional? 3,000 miles or 10,000 miles in that oil change interval? Engine sludge. Flat tappet camshaft failure, zinc, viscosity. People have strong opinions about all of these things, but how much of that is based on marketing and urban myth compared to facts and science? That's why we're here in Pennsylvania, to go back to the history of motor oil so you can better understand the present. In this video, we're gonna cover the origin of the petroleum industry. Yeah, we're kinda of already here. We're also gonna cover the origin of petroleum lubricants. That steam engine back there that ran this well, it wasn't lubricated by an oil because petroleum lubricants didn't exist yet. Once we got those petroleum lubricants, the next evolution was the advent of additives. We're also gonna cover the creation of synthetic oils, and we're gonna cover the three major changes to motor oil in the last 20 years. This is gonna be fun. So let's get started with crude oil. You see, the crude oil that comes out of the ground here in Pennsylvania is different than the crude oil that comes out of the ground in say, California or Texas or Saudi Arabia or really anywhere else in the world. Crude oil is almost uniquely different everywhere it's found. And that difference in the crude yields differences in the products that come out of the refinery. You see, a refinery just separates and then does some reforming to what is already in the crude. If you don't have, say, paraffins in the crude, then you can't make paraffinic oils. If the crude oil is high in naphthenics, it's going to yield more of a naphthenic oil. You may have heard the terms sweet crudes and sour crudes. Well, that refers to the amount of sulfur in the crudes. So, it happened to be here in Pennsylvania, you had a light, sweet, paraffin-based crude, which ended up being really good for making motor oils. It also made kerosene that didn't stink. You can't say that for all the other crude oils. In fact, the first crude found outside of Pennsylvania was found over in Lima, Ohio, and it was stinky. It was a sour crude, and no one wanted it for kerosene because it was stinky. Caps off, woo, and you can smell it. Too bad there's no smell of vision on YouTube, otherwise you could smell the sulfur. The stinky gear oil smell is all in effect right here. Anyone that's been around stinky sulfur gear oils knows exactly what I'm talking about. You would not want to be burning that stuff in your house. It smells bad enough in gear oil, whoo, in your house, that'd be awful. So now that we know that the Pennsylvania grade crude is unique, let's go to the refinery to see how they turn it in to motor oil. This is the Bradford Refinery in Bradford, Pennsylvania, 
the home of Kendall Motor Oils. This is the birthplace of Kendall GT1, which is one of the most famous racing oils. Big Daddy Don Gartless and all those guys use Kendall GT1. It all came from right here using that Pennsylvania crude. Speaking of the Kendall brand, this is the creek where it got its name. So this is Pennsylvania grade crude oil. And this are all the things that are made out of Pennsylvania grade crude oil right here at this refinery. This is the last man standing, the last refinery still using Pennsylvania grade crude. There's the train hauling in the crude. Behind me is the fractioning tower here at the Bradford refinery. This is one of the oldest refineries in the world. It's been making oil for over 160 years. And what's unique about this refinery, it still processes the Pennsylvania grade crude, the old school way and makes lube oil. You see, not every refinery actually makes lubricating oil. It depends upon the type of crude that goes into that refinery. You see, each refinery is designed to separate the crude source that goes into that refinery. So this refinery is built to refine Pennsylvania grade crude. If you tried to put Gulf naphthenic crude into that refinery, it just wouldn't work. An everyday way you can see the difference in those refined petroleum products is at the gas station. Just look at the diesel pump handle and how dirty it is compared to the gasoline pump handle and how clean it is. Well, the difference is gasoline, octane, it means it's an eight carbon length molecule where diesel has cetane, which is a 16 carbon long molecule. So that difference in molecular size means it's heavier which means it doesn't boil as easy. That's why gasoline boils off first. It's lighter, fewer number of carbon atoms in the molecule. Diesel is heavier because it has twice as many carbon and hydrogen atoms as gasoline. That difference in molecular length is the difference in their boiling points, which is why a gasoline pump is clean and a diesel one is dirty. Bradford's home to more than just the refinery. It's also home of Zippo lighters. You see that refinery makes more than just gasoline and motor oil. It also makes lighter fluid. Even over 160 years later, we're still pulling crude oil out of the ground here in Pennsylvania. Makes you wonder, was it really dead dinosaurs <laughs> that made crude oil? The deepest well drilled here on earth is about seven and a half miles deep, which means we know more about the surface of the moon than we know about what's in the core of the earth. Some of these old wells, after being capped for 80 years, they were thought to be dry, but now they're actually producing oil again. So we don't really know where the crude oil came from. We are glad that it's here. And as car guys and gals, we're really thankful for that Pennsylvania grade crude oil that made for excellent motor oils, that created brands like Valvoline, Quaker State, Kendall, Penn's Oil, all the big famous brands of motor oil all came from the Pennsylvania grade crude oil refineries because that Pennsylvania grade crude oil had excellent lubricating properties for internal combustion engines. It had better wear protection naturally, just right out of the ground and then through the refinery process. That Pennsylvania grade crude oil yielded a lubricating oil with a high viscosity index, which was great for internal combustion engines. Plus, it had a nice level of natural sulfur along with natural esters, which provided great anti-wear protection, especially for those old flat tappet cams way back in the day. Those natural lubricating properties were really important at the beginning of the automotive industry because there weren't any additives yet for motor oil. All you had was the natural lubricating properties of the base oil itself. So when Ford picked Valvoline, when Franklin picked Quaker State, they were picking it because of the natural lubricating properties of the base oil, which were all Pennsylvania grade base oils. So it was those natural lubricating properties that made those oils stand apart well before additives came along in the 40s and the 50s. So by the time we had ZDDP and multi-grade additives and anti-foam additives and antioxidants and all these wonderful additives that make oil better, the big brands had already established their reputation 
based on the quality of that base oil. And that base oil came right here from Pennsylvania. And just in case you thought I forgot, what lubricated that steam engine at the Drake well was whale oil. So before there was petroleum lubricants, whale oil and plant-based oil had been lubricating equipment for millennia. This is the McClintock well in Oil City, Pennsylvania. It's one of the oldest wells in the world and still produces today. The oil from this well used to be in Penn's oil and Quaker State. And they used to be here in Oil City, Pennsylvania. Today, neither Penn's oil or Quaker State are here in Oil City, Pennsylvania, and neither of them use Pennsylvania grade crude anymore. The Drake well was drilled in 1859. The McClintock well in 1861, still producing today. All of those came after John Ramsbottom invented the piston ring in 1852. And Nicholas Otto, he hadn't even invented the internal combustion engine when all of these things had happened. That's right. Valvoline actually created engine oil for steam locomotives before the internal combustion engine was ever even invented. Like I said, Valvoline was made in New York, but its source was 100% Pennsylvania. Here's another fun fact. The reason why refineries like Quaker State and Penn's Oil focus so much on building their brand of motor oil is that because gasoline is a commodity, whereas motor oil as a branded product could command higher margins. So those refineries needed to make as much money as they possibly could on all their products. And so many products like gasoline and diesel being commodity prices, those margins weren't big. Margins on motor oil were a lot bigger because it wasn't a commodity. Therefore, they spent a lot of money marketing those products to take advantage of those higher margins. If you find the history of motor oil fascinating, you'll love the book, The Prize by Daniel Jurgen. It's actually a Pulitzer Prize winning history of the oil industry. So speaking of that gasoline and motor oil that came from that Pennsylvania grade crude, well, it didn't take very long for people to find Pennsylvania grade crude outside of Pennsylvania. In fact, the Pennsylvania oil field stretched as far north as New York and Ontario, and as far south as Kentucky and West Virginia. And like we mentioned earlier, eventually crude oil was found other places, like Lima, Ohio in 1855, and it made it into the Midwest. Then in 1901, Spindletop, the world's first gusher, was drilled right here in Beaumont, Texas. It produced over 100,000 barrels a day. And then in 1903, they built a refinery here in Beaumont that today is the home of Mobile One. Then in 1921, right where I'm standing here in Signal Hill, California, one of the largest oil fields in the world was discovered. And as you can see, it's still producing. Over a hundred years after initially discovering oil here in Signal Hill, California, oil is still coming out of the ground. In fact, almost one billion barrels of oil have been pulled out of the ground right here in Los Angeles. So one of the things about Los Angeles that makes it similar to Titusville, Pennsylvania, and there's not much those two places have in common, but the one thing they did have in common related to the discovery of oil were tar pits. There were tar pits, oil seeps in Pennsylvania before the first oil well was drilled. They already knew oil was around there and they were using it. Same thing here. The La Brea tar pits have been around before Signal Hill was producing oil like this. So these early oil seeps and tar pits help people find the crude oil. But the crude here in California is different than the crude in Pennsylvania. Where that Pennsylvania crude was light and sweet, the crude here in California tended to be heavier and more sour. And as we mentioned earlier, the properties of the crude going into the refinery affect the performance of the products coming out of the refinery. So those differences in the properties of the crude led to differences in things like the octane of gasoline. Also in 1921, the ethyl corporation was started to produce 
tetral ethyl lead that could boost the octane of the gasoline. That was a game changer because it leveled the playing field. Now engines could have the right amount of octane to perform properly. That was a great thing for consumers and for engines alike. Later in 1941, the Lubrizol Corporation invented zinc dialkyl dithiophosphate. That's hard to say, so we just call it zinc or ZDDP instead. And it had the same effect of leveling that playing field. As an anti-wear additive, it raised the anti-wear performance of any oil it was put into. This key anti-wear additive allowed for higher speed engines because it could protect flat tappet camshafts so well. That's why everyone with a flat tappet camshaft knows about the word zinc in relation to camshaft wear because ZDDP is a key anti-wear additive for flat tappet camshafts. So here's the thing, because additives are such an important part of motor oil history, not just ZDP, things like multi-grade additives, antioxidants, antifoam, pore point depressors, all of these things, which are additives, are critical to the development of modern motor oil. Because of that, we're gonna treat additives as its own separate video. So this has gone from being the history of motor oil video to the history of motor oil series. And we've also planned a trip down to Houston, Texas to do a whole episode just on synthetic base oils. So I hope you've enjoyed chapter one of our series on the history of motor oil. And if you happen to like this stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time for chapter two. And stay tuned for the next video.